Well guys, uh, we have, you missed the worst of it. So we're going over the fence posts on this side without trying to take off any parts of our header which can easily come off. And we're underneath the fence on this side so we're actually going like this and we've had to go in around and back in and come around and back out and back in and then down the road and uh, it's a lot of fun. You're probably like, holy crap Mike, why are you having to go over all these fence posts? Look at these gigantic cuts in the road that we have to work with. That's hard on duels. That's like two feet deep. Two feet! Um, because Get on our next way. field is only about a mile or two up and it's not worth trying to put on our transports for that. And then we're going to try and we're going to jump into this ditch here, up this ditch, so we can take off some of this, uh, Ooh, watch these rocks, Mike. Hold on, we're gonna climb this climb this ditch here. We're gonna climb this ditch. Oh, we're still going too fast. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Tip the header back here. Joystick is a little bit more of a challenge here when you're working with this stuff. See, by going in this field here, we can actually bypass about a quarter mile of that, and that is what I like to hear. See, technically, they're not supposed to have their fences that close, the road allowance, but, uh, you know, they're just back roads, so everybody wants to get them as close as you can, obviously. But, but on the other hand, you're not normally transporting 50 feet of header down there either, so. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Then by looks, we're actually gonna jump across again and go down, uh, some hayland by the look of it that's all nicely been cut already just so you can bypass some of this fence posts we have ripped stuff off that sensor bar is the first to go the first to go so this gate is uh mighty small so you sometimes you gotta back your you actually have to drive in back one header in rotate it up and then sometimes it takes two or three points to get in but you can do it you can get a 50 foot header without lifting over into a 20 foot gate particular one we're gonna go over this side get it over here just before we hit this fence post on the front of the header drop this header down and then go up and over that fence post I can't do it while I'm driving I'm sorry so now we're we're gonna go over this one here get the header down over here there that's how we do it now we'll jump across over here and we're just about there you guys we're just about there and this is how you move a 50 foot header down and we're here. One more gate to get through, and we're at the field, buddies. We made it. We made it. Well, guys, we're just finishing up the last quarter down here before we embark on a move. We got Eric running around out here somewhere. I can see him running behind that combine. Eric is a, he's an awesome guy. He's actually a, he's an engineer from Heston that's been up here for, I don't know, a week, a week or so. You can see him standing out there. That guy is awesome. You know, I've often heard that engineers sometimes they design stuff from their office and they should have to work from it, work on it as well. And I 100% agree with that. And Eric has definitely been that kind of guy. He crawled through the air duct up the back of the combine that lets the air out for your sieves. He crawled through that and started digging at a plug like a badger. Like that guy is, he's part machine. I'm, I'm positive. Anyway, the nicest guy ever. It's so awesome to be supported and, uh, and just to have echo and these engineers up here so that way we can show them what's wrong hey these pins are here and hey this is going on hey this is out of calibration hey this keeps giving trouble so it's been awesome to have him up here and uh he's a cool guy are you gonna hop on here good sir oh eric oh hello he's on his phone here should i text him or hello Hello! <laughs> See, the joke's on you guys. That's not actually a real person. That's just a, a mannequin we have in the field. <laughs> no, he is a real person, actually. But, uh, yeah, we're done. So, we're going to start hooking up our header trailers again, like I showed you in the, one of the last videos. And we're going to take off down the highway. Stay tuned. All right, everyone is pretty much hooked up to their headers right now. There's Ashton. Uh, I can't because I don't have a header. I don't have a hitch on the tent. So we're gonna have to pull it with something else. So we're just about ready to go. Well, they're they're moving out.
But not me. I know you guys have a question. Mike, how come you're not moving out? Well, uh, Echo won't let us road the Kanban. So that was really short notice to us, actually. We had about uh, about an inch of rain down here. Oh, half an inch. Half an inch to one inch, depending on where you were, I guess I should say. So we've been off for two days. If I would have known that we couldn't road it and if it had to be hauled, we would have had it hauled a long time ago. But the soon as we were hooking up our headers, we got a call saying we can't road it. I'm like, come on, you guys. The funny thing is, is we're just about there. Like we're 30, 40 miles from home already. We're halfway to our field. Well, I think we're probably over halfway. So that's a bit of a kick in the pants. Oh well. We'll carry on. All right, guys. I'll see you when I see you. And we're moving down the highway. We're obviously not going very fast. You can see the combines all up there between the bug guts. I uh, will let you know when we get there. Yeah, I'm standing in the middle of the highway here. The tracks are warming up a little bit here on the tracked unit. We're just going a little too fast, so we're gonna have to slow the tracked unit down, hence the grain cart, I'm talking. The tracks on the two track are as cool as cool as a cucumber. The tracks on the nine, ideal, cool as a cucumber. These idlers on this one, and it's empty by the way, not cool as a cucumber. You could cook an egg on them, literally. So, he's gonna slow down, I'll follow him, Terry with the other header, he's going to catch up with the combines because they haven't slowed down. And we got about 16 miles up to go, so we're, we're not far away. Well, we're still moving here. Caught back up with the other combines. They, did a, they stopped and did a bearing check at the same time, so... As you can see, there's three, uh, three vehicles that are passing right now, you can see. We're trying to get by. This is actually really easy because they have a whole lane practically. They got a whole lane. It's when you're moving an air drill, when you're to that white line, to that white line, and you really can't get over. That's what's the challenge. This is easy. This is what dreams are made out of, you guys. <laughs> well, Mike, I have questions. <laughs> I kind of figured you would. First of all, is it hard on your tires and tracks to be on this pavement? Well, it's probably not easy for him to be quite honest, but that's a 2013 cart and it's made this trip I don't know how many times and we still haven't done anything to it. No tracks on that puppy yet. And it has roaded it its whole life. So, uh, ah, that's just part of life, you guys. That's part of farming. That is just part of farming. I have another question. Yeah, what's that? So, why do you have land so far away? I don't know, I guess that's just also part of life. It's just called risk management for us. We just, we don't like everything, all of our apples in one little basket, I guess. There's the header for the 10. Looks like they're just waiting for us. That's awfully nice of them. That looked bouncy. We'll pull in. All right, we're here. So uh, I know you guys probably have a bunch of other questions and I'll try to get to those here. All right, I know you guys got some questions here, like holy crap, why is it almost dark? Why are we going down a gravel road? Mike, 
please answer. Well, as soon as I got to the field, I uh, needed to go pick up one of our guys whose truck died on him trying to get to work here this morning in Swift Current. So I went and go pick him, went to go pick him up. And then uh, now we're just moving trucks around, such as the fire wagon, fuel wagon type stuff, to different fields, trying to get ready to go. I'm more of a gopher now. Since I'm not in the combine, I'm more of a gopher. So that's kind of why and what we're doing right now. But we are working our way back here to the combines. So hopefully we'll be back at the combines in about another half an hour, give or take. So I'll see you when we get to the field. All right, just getting back to the field. Basically dark. Should be some combines going out here somewhere. I hope. Let's see what we can find here. So we're just here uh, waiting, the gopher, running to fix anything or help with anybody. And uh, so Rick brought his combine over because his header on the left hand side keeps digging in <laughs> keeps digging into the dirt and the, the ground's kind of wet so when the ground's wet because of the rain that we had it sticks very easy what do we got over here just cleaning the dirt off the canvases so it can mean different things could be the bolts out could be one of these sensors on the sensor bar come out of uh, um, adjustment just a little bit so we're going to do some diagnosing here and see if we can't figure this out However, we can get this combine up and running. All right. So here's the honeybee monitor. We want to check how much air it's got in. These are the volts right here. So uh, I got to play around with this. Hey, I'm gonna play around with it. Watch your little fingies. Unless you don't care about them, and then it doesn't matter. Whatever you want. <laughs> whatever, whatever you want. Okay. Everything seems to be pretty close actually on the honeybee monitor. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into calibrations here and we're just going to recalibrate. Sometimes things can come out of calibration and so we're just going to recalibrate. Alright. You don't have to really do anything. You just got to hit the calibration button and it just does it all itself. And you want to try and be on level ground if you can. And it will lift it up and it will tilt it back, tilt it forward, tilt it this way and tilt it this way. And it... But anyway, I'm not going to bore you with the calibration procedure. It will typically take, I don't know, five minutes. Not very long. Alright, so we recalibrated. We actually had to go through twice just due to this header gets really sticky and it actually won't move anymore not enough jam in this feeder house to make it tilt hard enough especially when you start getting dirt and chaff and stuff like that in there so uh, we actually had to help it we jumped on the end of it to help tilt it down so that way we could finish our calibration otherwise it failed the first time so now uh, he's gonna go try that hopefully that's gonna fix the problem it's gonna fix it right Rick it's gonna fix it it's gonna fix it all right he's out of here Anyone up next? Who's next? <laughs> well, we're waiting here, I guess. Why don't we just go take a look at the beggar? This is just another day. It's another day. That's a good looking bag, buddy. It's a good looking bag. We should do like some sort of artwork. We could have some sort of fancy art like to do on like railroad cars. <laughs> All right, we're actually in the combine right now. We're just uh, swapped Rick out. He was having a little bit more trouble, so I just. I hopped in it to see if I can help figure anything out. And it seems to be working fine. 
that's how it goes. It's kind of like when you break down, like a sensor goes, and uh, you like take it to the tech or get the tech to come down, and then you can't make it do it again. Except for us on the ideals, they always seem to do it again. <laughs> but in normal cases, it's hard to get them to do it again. So it's all working pretty good. Now I have a steering wheel. I'm not sure what to think about this. It's actually good for me. I can jump from one to the next and kind of see which one I like. I definitely notice a power difference. Uh, yeah, that's pretty, pretty noticeable. Down the north side. All right, guys. That's a wrap. We're calling it a night. Our bag is full. It's actually starting to spit on us out here. It's late. We're tired. It's been a long day. Um, yeah. And you have to remember, guys, we still have like an hour and 30 or so minutes to get back home. Just to get home. <laughs> we got a long drive just to get home. So that's what also kind of adds to our uh, the length of our days, not going to lie. So I will catch you guys on the flip side. Thanks for following me around. You guys are awesome, by the way. These are just basically days in the life of farming. Sometimes you have good days. Sometimes you don't have good days. Sometimes you break down a whole lot. Sometimes you don't break down at all. But uh, the trend has been breaking down lately, which has kind of been unfortunate. Hopefully we can get that resolved. But uh, we're nearing the completion of harvest, by the way. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave it at that. They're all blowing off over there. I think Rickles needs to uh, clean his window. And uh, yeah, you guys have yourself a good one. Good night and sleep tight. <laughs>